Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagarevich. And I'm Nina Zagarevich. And in the other screen, you see this wonderful, lovely couple, uh, Reverend Tony Abram, his wife, Marge Abram, both missionary evangelists or all over the world. And when I say all over the world, it is literally all over the world, over 125 nations. And we welcome you this morning, Tony and Marge. And folks, thank you for joining us. Please, before I go any further, press that little button that says oh. share. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that little button that says share. And that way your friends will join us will have the opportunity to join us and together we may talk about the things of the Lord, pray for the nations. We're praying for Ukraine very much uh, these days. We'll pray for America. We'll pray for your needs. So tune in. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and please share the link right now. If you're watching on LinkedIn, please share also the link and if you're watching on our webpage, well, continue to come back and watch more of these broadcasts. Welcome, Tony and Marge. God uh, is good, and uh, it is good to see both of you healthy and strong. And smiling. Praise the Lord. Well, we greet you today in the wonderful name of Jesus and how precious he is to us. It gets sweeter as the days go by. Every day gets sweeter with Jesus. I used to sing a song singing it sweeter gets the journey every day serving jesus really pays i get heaven happy in the heavenly way sweeter gets the journey every day and it's true jesus grows sweeter every day he grows more precious as we get older i believe we start to realize or we realize that god is so good his his blessings his compassion his love for us and we realize that he does love us, especially as we get older. We see the love of God taking care of us, being with us. He is so good. So we want to just praise the Lord today as we share with you and as we uh, pray for your needs today. Yes, God is a good God. And I, I had a song, too, uh, on my heart this morning. That will be glory for me. That will be glory for me. When by his grace... I shall look on his face. Oh, that will be glory for me. And I guess that is why we're running the race, trying to keep the faith, determined to keep, uh, finish the course that God has set for us, uh, is because he first loved us. And a lot of people, and people, maybe some many of you watching, don't realize, but God loves you. He loves you more. Than, than words can ever describe. He loves you. And if you were the only person that ever lived, if he had just created you, he, he loved you so much. He loves you so much that mm -hmm. Jesus would have came into the world to shed his blood as that sacrifice to redeem you. Because you may say, oh, I wouldn't have done like Adam or Eve. Yes, you would have failed as well as Adam, as Eve. I know I've had the same thoughts, especially when things are going wrong. Why, did why Adam, why Father A. Adam, way back there, mm -hmm. he, he sinned. Just like you and I would have been tempted and we would have sinned. But God so loved us and loves us, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall have everlasting life. So, Walter, Nina, uh, thank you for having us on your program today. Uh, it's always a joy to share with you and to share the word. And we just look forward uh, to the grace of God and to the answer to prayer. I might mention that a little later, but he is answering prayer. Great. God bless you both, especially Amen. during this time with your efforts for Ukraine. Amen. 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 
Thank you, Tony and Marge. We love you both and we're happy to have you with us. Well, I just want to um, add on to what you said. Yes, God loves us so much that he sent his only son to die for us. But again, we know that we just celebrated he did ri rise again. And so we are free from the curse of sin and we can live with him forevermore. But he also doesn't want us to worry. And what scripture popped out of my mind and he um, laid on my heart today is Matthew um, 6, 33, and a little bit before it says, I tell you, do not worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or clothes or whatever you need. Life is, isn't life more important than these things? He said, look at the birds. They don't plant, they don't harvest, they don't store food in the barns, but your heavenly father knows and he feeds them. So he's telling us not to worry. He says, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? He says, look at the lilies and see how they grow. They're beautiful. Even King Solomon didn't, wasn't in all his glory, was not dressed as beautiful as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and gone tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. So let's have more faith. Don't worry about these things. Your heavenly father already knows you need these things. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So let's keep looking at God, focusing on our savior and all these things will be added to us. We don't need to worry. He doesn't want us to worry. He wants us to have complete trust in him. Amen. And you know this, uh, we've gotten pictures and videos from churches that we are in relationship <laughs> with in Ukraine and pastors there. And it's just so precious to see them gathered for Easter, despite right. the war going on. And <clears throat> in some of the pictures have given out gifts to children and the smiles on those little children's faces. I mean, they've got rockets falling there. Even cities like Zaporizhia had uh, had a rocket attack a couple of days ago. Uh, the city of Kharkiv. We got a call late last night. Um, we stopped. We were going mm -hmm. to bed, and we uh, saw this uh, voice message. We stopped. We prayed for them. Um, seven rockets falling in that city. Just awful situations. Mm -hmm. Yet they too gathered on Sunday, Easter Sunday. Yes, they didn't have as big of a crowd there in Kharkiv, but they were worshiping God. They were looking onto Jesus. And just like Jesus resurrected from the dead. We believe that Ukraine will resurrect from the rubble and will come That's up right. a stronger nation and particularly the church of Jesus Christ. We see God strengthening them because many, many souls are coming to Jesus. Um, some of these churches, uh, the part of the congregation has moved uh, uh, to the West or has fled to another country, but they've filled up with new people. And we see that all over uh, Ukraine, uh, where churches have filled up with people um, that are seeking God, are uh, truly committing their lives to Jesus Christ. So yeah. God is uh, uh, answering prayer. And Brother Tony, you were uh, beginning to share about that. So would you go, go ahead and share about God's answers to prayer? Because we see them every day, or we hear them every mm -hmm. day from our friends in Ukraine on the front lines and pastors like you know, a pastor from Boltava that has been traveling to some of these really badly uh, damaged areas in Sumi, for example. I mean, the, the town, some of the villages he's shown me, I mean, there's nothing left there, you would think, but there's still people in those in the rubble. You know, he's shown me pictures of the city of Kharkiv. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is just horrible. Horrific. Uh, the horrific pictures of this beautiful city, and yet there are people living there, and there are people grateful to God that God has given them another day to live. And that's how many of the messages we receive from them begin by saying we're grateful to God, we're alive, and we have another opportunity to serve people again today. Uh, Brother Tony. Uh just wanted to say that uh, Kharkiv, uh, a, a city where we did probably the most work uh, in buying the most buildings in the province, and uh, and it's just it just hurts to see the enemy attacking. Of course, the enemy hates God, and he hates the things of God, and 
Kharkiv, uh, close to the Russian border there, that used to be the capital city before Kiev uh, was became the capital city of the country. And it's the second largest city. And it has been attacked time and time again. But as, as you have been praying, as you've been leading prayer, you and Nina have been leading prayer uh, for Kharkiv and for Ukraine at odd hours of the day at times. And yet God is answering prayer. Now, you mentioned these seven rockets. And yet here's bombs have been landed right beside these brethren, and they haven't gone off as well. And we give God praise for answer to prayer. It pays to pray. And uh, as we are praying, God is doing things. And and then to switch over uh, to answered prayer, uh, I know that m- myself, there's a number of times I have put requests on Facebook. And I want to say that a lot of times we are like the, the nine uh, uh, blo- uh, lepers that didn't come and give God the praise uh, we, we receive. And many people are receiving healing, receiving answer to prayer. And uh, they're like one of the nine. Uh, and they should be that one that did come to Jesus. And Jesus said, was there not 10? And where, where's the other nine? But I want to say that we are also receiving testimonies of people that have been healed, that God has answered prayer, that God has protected. And it is because we are praying. Uh, And as you pray, uh, Walter has been trying to encourage people to pray, to pray for Ukraine, and to pray for the people. And God is answering prayer. And even with the finances, it's been coming in. Now, I would to God there would be a whole lot more because they need it. And uh, the, even, the, even the ones on the outside, like in Poland and Romania and Slova- uh, Slovakia, and, and uh, they, they need it too. They're helping the refugees. But uh, Walder's ministry is geared toward those that are still inside. And the help that Abundant Life Crusades has been doing, it's for the people inside the country that are hungry, that are doing without. And uh, so we're all workers together with Christ. All is important. And I want to encourage you that are watching to pray and to do something about it. Marge, did you have something to go along with this? I wanted to share uh, about God's love. I just uh, had the portion from Lamentations in verse 22. It says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. And and as we're praying for these, we know God is answering prayer in Ukraine. Amen. He's protecting people miraculously. You know, uh, Lamentations was written after the uh, Babylonian captivity when they went into Babylon, the Jews. and uh, into exile there but you know god's heart even though he allowed them to suffer because they had sinned with their worship of idols they had sinned and not caring for their neighbors and being cruel to some of their people and uh and workers and so forth god has been so patient he had been patient with them and he was so long suffering with them and yet he promised them deliverance he did say that they would be restored back to their land in Jeremiah 30 and Jeremiah 33. He tells us that 
they would be restored. And we just think of how at, at Brother Walter and Sister Nina of Ukraine, we are praying for their restoration, that God will restore them again to their land. Because they, as we hear people saying they love their country, everyone loves their country they were born in. There would be something wrong if you didn't care for your country and hated it. But anyway, God is so good. And as we hope in him and trust in him and his promises, as we realize his great love for us and his love for other people, he reaches out in love. And as we see God's love for us, we want to share that love with others. And we want to tell them about Jesus and the love of God. And this war, it's terrible. But there is a good part of it, too. This war has caused, if not, I believe, thousands, many thousands of Ukrainians to come to Christ. I mean, the Bible says all things work together for good. I mean, we look at this war, it's terrible. But there, God can take that which is terrible. And for individuals that are coming, and uh, they, they've got bombs falling about, and they're turning to God. Well, otherwise, they probably would never turn to God. And God is getting, and, and, and they're going to remember this. They're never going to forget this, because God is doing a work in the lives of thousands. And the kindness and love that the Christians and, and believers are showing right. to them, they're realizing the love of God. Why would these people do this? It's the love of God constraining them to help and love these people that are so in need. Yeah, that's what they're seeing. They're seeing yes. a demonstration of the, the work that uh, you guys are doing. Yes. They, people see that. That's a, that's a work of God. Is that you're not gaining anything from this. You're not filling your pockets. No. Uh, I, I'm sorry to say there are some charlatans out there that are using uh, and trying to raise money for Ukraine that uh, Ukraine will never see. And it's a shame. And that's why the Bible says, know them that labor among, among, among you. And it's important that we know who we're giving to. And I can... I can vouch for Walter and Nina. Yes, uh, that there's we no... know them from from before they were married, <laughs> <laughs> and, they're, they're, yeah. and, and they're also for Ukraine yes. and the work they're doing there. We know that they're, they're putting their whole heart into it. Yes. It's a labor of love, yeah. not yeah. natural love, agape love, God's love. His and love God, is shed God abroad will... in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's the kind of love yes. they have. God bless you both. Well, thank you for those encouraging words, Tony and Marge, and uh, just uh, a, a little um, word here in, in uh, talking with uh, Harkiv, the pastor there says, we've got a couple of reporters now, I forget what countries they were from, that showed up and started asking questions and looking at where they're at, mm -hmm. and they said, how can you even live in these conditions, let alone be helping others uh, because they were just amazed that they are in the conditions that they are themselves. Mm -hmm. And yet in that condition, they're reaching out and helping others, not worrying about themselves, mm -hmm. uh, living in the church, uh, taking care of people in the basement of the church, or I should say the bomb shelter underneath and cooking for people running back and forth uh, throughout the city and giving food to the needy, that, taking food to other uh, that building, towns. Those windows are blown out already and they had to um, cover, them, cover up. them up already. So it's not like that, that building that they're in has not been affected. It has been. Right. It, uh, at least one or two sides of the building have uh, had the, uh, glass and windows blown out by one of the attacks recently um i think almost a week ago already mm -hmm. so in the midst of that they're still there they're still staying there mm -hmm. and uh, uh they're continuing to um minister and, and I want to say this because you were thinking, well, as a pastor, he's ministering to his people. No, no, they, it's not just limited to ministering to believers from the church. The They've city. been ministering to the city, to the community around to the them. community, to the defenders of the city. They've uh, they actually um, go seek for people in right. these buildings because Absolutely. they know there's people that are stuck in these high rise 
buildings. They can't they leave. They can't leave. They don't have elevators. They're elderly. They can't walk far. So they go searching for people to make sure they're fed and that they're okay. Yes. And not only that, uh, mm-hmm. he was, uh, they were heading out. Uh, um, uh, you know, bomb, as soon as the bombs will stop, they head out. They were heading out to a home for, a home for the elderly to take food to them. And uh, that's the sad part. In some of these places, the younger people were able to leave. Not all have left, but some of them have been able to leave. The elderly have been left behind because they are immobile or they have no means of getting out. And um, But the churches are ministering to them. And then the pastor from Poltava, he's gone to some of the towns and villages around Kharkiv that are very close to the line of combat very dangerous areas. And uh, he's finding people um, in towns and villages that have been completely cut off without any supplies of foods because the roads are destroyed. And he, um, we talked to Igor on Monday. We saw he, the road that he traveled. It's oh, pretty yeah. rough. It's rough. <laughs> there, yeah. some of the through the woods. Yeah, some of the cars hit a, um, the vans hit a bump, a big bump, you know, from the shelling. And it ruins their underneath of their car. So then they have to go fix the car. It's, it's a mess. Um, so, uh, but Brother Igor, whom I had on Monday, I mean, they get to the front lines uh, to the soldiers and the soldiers say, how in the world did you get here? Because they know not only the danger of getting there, the roads are awful. And yet they're there. They bring supplies uh, um, to help them. They pray for the soldiers. They, they've been able to get, Brother Igor has been able to get uh, tourniquets and, and things to treat wounds and treat uh, those on the front lines. And um, he's been going into very tough areas. Uh, and so we, we uh, he formed a team and they're going out but there. Igor is from here. I just want to remind everybody, he lives in Washington. He works, he works there and he's taken time off. He's been there two months already. And he said he still wants to be in there another month to help. So, so he took time, uh, family time um, from uh, work to be able to do this and um, working with the chaplains, working, uh, taking help to the front lines. He's made a couple of trips all the way to Poland and to Germany to pick up the kind of things that specifically are needed by those on the front lines, like tourniquets and what do you call those stretchers that they carry people on? Um, Well, yeah, they were kind of a special one, but anyway. Yeah, gurneys, yes. Um, and so, uh, uh, but there is a tremendous work in the Donbass area with Bishop Anatoly. He had to evacuate his wife because her heart was already um, bothering her so much. You know, with the you hear the Stressful. rockets, you hear the uh, uh, things, and, and and she went through that whole situation in 2014 with that when that war was going. It's really a continuation of that. And so he had, he evacuated, but he goes back, and this is pretty far. And he continues to work and work and work. And they've got people coming from all over that Donbass region, from Luhansk, from Donetsk regions, and some of them traumatized. And they continue to take food to these uh, towns and supplies, some of them without water. They have to take water to them. And then and some places like the pastor from Bultava and others have had to take generators because there's no power now in some of these places and so we continue to pray and we thank you. We're telling you the difficulties, but in the midst of all these things, we keep hearing of testimonies, people coming to Jesus Christ, churches filling up, not just for Easter, they're filling up whenever there's a meeting, people seeking God, new people filling up these churches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, um, and and like in the case of Michalai, the pastor's wife ended up in the hospital. She ends up evangelizing three or four floors of this hospital, mm-hmm. and the church begins a ministry there. Now they're feeding people there. They're bringing help to the doctors. Uh, there's no water in the city. They've been collecting water, bringing it to the hospital bringing supplies there. And, uh, and and God has opened a whole new opportunity of ministry there. And, and they are ministering, not just with words, but with deeds as well. And people are opening up their hearts. Uh, I've heard several times that people will say to them, why are you doing this? And they tell them, we are Christians and we are compelled 
to help others. Because some people are just amazing. Why in the world are you doing what you're doing? Mm -hmm. uh, and Christians are asked that question over and over again. I mean, they could be fleeing themselves. They could be just watching out for themselves. No, they're watching out for others. They're taking the help. And so I want to thank every one of you who have yeah. contributed uh, through our ministry or through Brother Tony and Marge's ministry, uh, through other ministries. And if you want to donate right now, you can go to our webpage, Global Vision Ministries, plural, uh, globalvisionministries.org.org, and uh, you can press the donate button, designate Ukraine. 100% of what you get for Ukraine is going to go to Ukraine. And Amen. so uh, we thank you. We uh, we continue to support uh, these various cities. And there are uh, different things. The, the situation is fluid. There are, uh, for example, in Zaporizhia right now, uh, most of that province, if we could call it Oblast, they call it, um, is under Russian occupation. But the city has been a safe haven, the city of Zaporizhia. But now there are, uh, there's a move towards a, the city of Krivoyrog by the uh, Russian forces. So people in the way of the Russian uh, forces path are fleeing after they have seen what happened in Bucha, after they have seen what is happening in other areas that have been liberated by Ukraine, uh, what they've done to people, how uh, um, most males now, they're not just... Uh, uh, before they were just check their uh, clothes under the, take off their clothes, check uh, to see if they had any kind of markings uh, uh, of being a patriot or being uh, committed to Ukraine in some way. And um, they would arrest him or kill them. Well, now they said, that unless those males uh, agree to switch sides and start fighting to help uh, the Russian army, they kill them right on the spot. And women are raped or killed. And so people now, as they see the Russian army approaching in a particular area, they flee. And so in Zaporizhia, they're not only taking care of people from uh, Mariupol, which they have quite a, uh, have had a, quite a few, and then they move them on to the west. They're still getting people from Mariupol, other parts of Donbass area, but they're getting people from the uh, region of uh, uh, Zaporizhia, where there's this movement uh, of forces. And uh, so the situation is fluid. We're in contact with them. We pray with mm -hmm. them for them. And we send uh, finances to help feed these people, uh, to transport uh, these people, and, um, and also to buy necessary medicines wherever they can be found. Because there's been a huge shortage of uh, basic medicines in most of these, in many of these cities, I should say most of them. But uh, we want to thank you who have supported, who continue to support, Amen. and uh, please continue to pray. Well, uh, we can go on here. I can, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but I think we should pray. And um, uh, uh, and Nina, did you want to add anything to that before we pray? No, it was just the, all the pastors and all the areas that the money is going to, they always are extremely grateful and in tears saying that this is a lifeline for us to keep going on, to keep going and doing what we're doing. That means God wants us to do this. We are doing it because he's giving us the finances, the capabilities of being able to help people to evacuate people to feed people to shelter people so thank you again for your finances they are beyond grateful amen but even more than that the mm -hmm. first thing they always thank they us the for prayer. is the prayers Absolutely. and they say the prayers are sustaining them and thank all of those who are praying for them that's right so brother tony would you pray you know these <laughs> cities you know these areas you've been there many many times mm -hmm. tony and marsh would you pray for Kharkiv, Zaporizhia, and the Donetsk areas? These are places you've invested time and money in uh, helping to train workers, plant churches, and also um, financially buy, uh, helping by buying buildings for many of these churches. So let's uh, let's pray for Ukraine right now. And would you lead us, uh, Brother Tony? Our Father and our God. Before we speak, you hear, while we're yet making our requests known, we believe you are answering prayer. But as we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, we bring these precious people. <clears throat> Lord, you see the buildings. Yes, uh, we, it, it grieves us that many of these buildings that were purchased and converted uh, 
into your local churches, Lord, have been destroyed by the enemy. We know the enemy, the devil doesn't like this. He hates the work of God. But Lord, what we now rejoice is that the hundreds and even thousands of Ukrainians, Lord, are turning and finding Christ as Savior, Lord, and Master. Lord, uh, this is the greatest defeat for the enemy as these people see the love of God exhibited by the children of God that are there. Lord, in the name of Jesus, and when they see the expressions of love uh, manifested uh, yes. from the outside, uh, yes. from America, from Canada, Lord, uh, from you, from the countries in Europe, uh, Lord, in Jesus' name, uh, not all the funds that are coming into Ukraine are going for bullets and for bombs and for rockets. Uh, it's going to take food and medicine and Lord uh, and helps uh, in the name of Jesus. And so, Lord, we pray, Lord, for all the workers there in Jesus' name. Lord, uh, you know so many workers have come even from the outside and they're risking their lives within the country itself. And we ask for your divine protection upon them. And Lord, we pray in Jesus' name for a continuing harvest of yes. precious Lord, souls uh, as they may turn and to Christ. Uh, and then, Lord, we pray for the ministries Thank there yes, that Lord. you will bless them. Uh, yes, Lord, you Lord. see the ones especially uh, yes, that uh, Global Vision, uh, Abundant Life Crusades, uh, and other ministries, yes, Lord, Lord, are supporting, yes, Lord. Uh, helping, Lord, uh, Lord and we Jesus. ask for double protection for them uh, oh, as they yes, exhibit, uh, oh. as they show the love of God uh, yes. in their hearts yes. by the oh. works of God yes. uh, in Jesus' oh. name. Uh, oh, Lord. Uh, and then, Lord, uh, we oh, pray for the wounded. Uh, we pray for those that are the, oh, the aged uh, that can't get out of the, even the apartment buildings. Uh, there's no elevators. Even some places, uh, the steps are blown out. Uh, and Lord, but you can provide. You can make a way, Lord. Uh, you provided for your prophets. Uh, the birds came uh, bringing food. Uh, well, Lord, I believe that you have men and women of God there that are working. Uh, and Lord, uh, you would help them and keep them uh, and the strengthen them. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and Lord, uh, we thank you for the many deliverances that have taken place. But yet, Lord, uh, as in all wars, uh, there are many that are being killed. Uh, many have been killed, Lord, and laying in mass graves. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, and in the name of Jesus, uh, we pray for the families that are grieving. Uh, Oh, yes, Lord, uh, for those yes, fathers, those, mo those mothers, yes, uh, those yes, children, yes, Lord, uh, those grandparents. Yes, uh, oh, yes, Father, yes, in the name yes, of Jesus, uh, it yes, grieves our heart. Yes, uh, but how much more yes, it must yes, grieve the heart of God. Yes, uh, Lord, don't let any yes, perish uh, without first yes, finding yes, Christ. Uh, as Savior, Lord, and Master, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and then, Lord, uh, we pray for the ministries uh, that are out there working, uh, Lord, uh, with the refugees in all those countries, uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we pray for ministries like Walter and Nina's Global Vision. Uh, Lord, it's not their ministry, it's your ministry, Lord. Uh, and we pray blessings upon them. Uh, Lord, supply the needs uh, and bless the people that have given. Uh, Lord, bless the people that have given through our ministry, Lord. Uh, and Lord, you know, we have given every cent uh, 
that has come in for Ukraine, uh, Lord, and we've added what we could add of our own, Lord. Uh, and in the name of Jesus, may it go to feed, may it go to help, uh, may it go to express uh, a little of the great love of God uh, that you have shed abroad in our hearts uh, by the Holy Ghost uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and Lord, we pray that thousands will come to Christ. And then Lord, uh, we pray for those Russian soldiers uh, that you will move upon their hearts. Uh, Lord, that when they look uh, in the sights of their rifle, when they look in the sights of uh, those rockets they're about to send off, that they may see in vision form uh, their own family at the other end. Uh, that they will be grieved in their hearts, uh, yes. that they cannot kill uh, their fellow uh, uh, Ukrainians, uh, Lord, that they cannot kill those people uh, on the other end uh, of the of the, what they're going to do, Lord. Uh, oh, let them see their own loved ones, uh, and may they refuse. Uh, to uh, uh, to send off those rockets, those bullets, uh, those uh, merchants of uh, uh, destruction uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, oh, Lord, save them. Uh, and then, Lord, uh, uh, we don't want to hate uh, Putin. Uh, Lord, it's in our natural man uh, to want to hate him, to hit him, uh, to kill him. Uh, but, Lord, that's not you love him. I know, Lord, that we can't understand it, uh, but I know that you love him and you want to yeah. save him. Uh, Lord, uh, they're saying he's sick. Uh, well, Lord, if yeah. you have to remove him from off the scene, uh, if he refuses to be converted to Christ, uh, then, Lord, take him off the, off the scene. Uh, and, Lord, put someone there with love and understanding uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, and we pray for... Uh, Lewinsky, Lord, in in Ukraine, uh, Lord, uh, you see that uh, uh, he's Jewish, uh, and Lord, uh, I, I ask that he might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as the Messiah, Lord, uh, and help him and his family and keep them, keep the Congress that they have their 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 officials, uh, their leadership. Uh, watch over them and give them wisdom. And Lord, I know it's so easy to have hatred, but Lord, put the love of God into both the Russians and the Ukrainians. In Jesus' name, put it in their hearts. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's Thank continue you. to yes. pray. Let's continue to believe God. And if you have a need in your life, maybe you're sick, maybe you're afflicted. And uh, we want to let you know that God has not forgotten you, that he loves you. He's loved you with an everlasting love. And he has a plan for your life. He wants to meet your needs. If you will invite him into your life, if you will invite him into your home, into your circumstances, he will come in. And so if you don't know Jesus as your Savior yet, would you open your heart and would you say, dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I admit I'm a sinner. And I also believe that Jesus Christ died for me, that he resurrected from the dead. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Save me, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer or something similar to that, sincerely, Jesus has come Amen. into your life. Follow him with all of your might, with all of your heart. Do three things every day, as we suggest here on the program. Talk to him every day. He wants to talk to you. Read his word, the Bible. Don't know where to start? Go to the fourth book in the New Testament, the gospel according to St. John. And tell others you're a follower of Jesus. Amen. Find a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church where you can grow in your faith in Jesus Christ can't find one where you're at, write us. We'll try to find one nearest you. And let's continue to pray for one for another. Maybe you're Amen. sick. Maybe you have a need of healing in your body. We want to pray for you as well. Sure. 
Father, we just come before you and bring everybody before you who that is um, feeling an illness in their body or in their mind, Father. I just send your word to them. You said you sent your word and you heal them and you deliver them from destruction, Father. And you sent Jesus Christ to die for them and that their sins may be forgiven and that their that they would be healed as well, Father. So we believe your word. We stand on your word. We receive your word, Father. So we just say, be whole in Jesus' name. We just pray Jesus over you. We pray wholeness over you. We bind that spirit of depression in Jesus' name. We bind that spirit of arthritis, of cancer, of COVID in Jesus' name. And we say, be whole in Jesus' name. God has paid the price. Jesus paid the price for your, your wellness. So we believe. So receive it today in Jesus' name. And I just see somebody with a toe that you can't put your foot in. You can't put your foot in your shoe because your toe is swollen. God says he's going to show you that he loves you because you don't believe that he cares for you, but he's going to reduce the swelling in that toe because he cares for you so much. Your foot is going to make it into that shoe in Jesus name. Receive your healing. Believe that he loves you so much that he wants you whole. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. And uh, we want to, uh, we're coming uh, to our close here. Um, and we want to pray for America, for Canada. America and Canada also need God. And of course, every nation does. And I'm going to ask Sister March to lead us in this prayer. But before we do that, I just want to thank you again, all of those who have stepped up to support the humanitarian relief crisis. We at the same time continue to um, support the work of God in different nations of the world. So do remember that. And uh, as the Lord leads you, please contribute so that we may be able to continue the work of God in the nations of the world. At this moment, our focus has been and continues to be especially on the nation of Ukraine. And I want to thank uh, our partners and friends throughout the United States Canada, churches, individuals, as well as in the United Kingdom and Taiwan and elsewhere in the world, but particularly those nations, uh, because you've stepped up in a great way in this hour, and uh, it will not go unnoticed by the Lord. But Sister March, would you pray uh, for America, for Canada, because we need God's intervention in these nations here. Yes. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you again, Lord, as we join in in our faith, Lord. We pray, Father, for the country of the United States, Lord. Oh, Father, we pray for all the states and the territories, the lands, Lord, the islands, Lord, the Hawaiian islands, Lord, uh, Father Guam and all the others, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. For this country, for Washington, D.C., the the authorities there, Lord, Father, in Jesus' name, all the parties of, of this country, Lord, Father, we pray for the Holy Spirit to move in their hearts, Lord. We're asking you for a great move of God and a revival to take place in this country, Lord, to reach out into all areas, Lord, in Jesus' name of government, of state government, Lord, of senators, governors, Amen. congressmen yes, and women. Lord. Father, we pray in oh, Jesus' Lord. name for these people, Lord, that are in authority in our yes, land. Yes. Father, for the president and for Amen. all his cabinet. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Saved. You would speak to them, Lord, yes. convict them of their sin and, Amen. Lord, of the leadership and leading them in into error, the people into error, Lord, with their statements they are making, and many are false, they are not true. God, we pray in Jesus' name for these people, God. We ask you to move in your with your Holy Spirit, convicting yes, their Lord. hearts in Jesus' name, in every area of life, Lord. Amen. Lord, in Jesus' name. God, and Lord, as we pray for the United States, we pray for Canada. Yes. We pray for the Prime Minister, Lord. Save. We pray, save him, Lord, and his cabinet. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name and all the parties there. Lord, the sin, the Lord, the uh, MPs and MLAs, and Lord, the Premier 
governors of the provinces and territories. God, we just pray in Jesus' name for Ottawa, the the state, the country's capital, Lord. Yes. We pray in Jesus' yes. name for them and God, authority God, there. God, Father, we pray move by your spirit. Lord, give yes. wisdom to the leadership, God, to know you. The fear of the Lord is the yes. beginning of wisdom. Yes. And so, Lord, we pray for all of these in Jesus' yes. name. <laughs> we pray, Father, for salvation to come, yes. a revival to come in Canada, yes. the moving of your Holy Amen, Spirit. Lord. And, Lord, we know you are moving yes, by your Lord. spirit and by your power. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> Father, we thank you for transforming Ukraine. Yes. We thank you that you are saving people and you're going to save many, many more. We thank you for the revival that will come yes. out of this situation, out of the rubble, out of the ashes, that there will be a strong and mighty move of God that will spread throughout the region, not just limited to Ukraine, but throughout the area. Father, we thank you for revival that you are going to send to America. We you for revival that yes. you are going to send to Canada. Yes. And Father, we lift up these nations and we thank, thank you, you that all is not lost, that you have not forgotten these That's nations, right. that your hand is moving even when we don't realize it. So Father, that name, that mighty name of Jesus Christ, uh, which name we lift up over America, over Canada, over Ukraine, over Russia, over the region. And Lord, we lift up the banner of the name of Jesus yes. for that name is above any That's and right. every name That's that right. is named, names of nations, names of diseases, That's names right. of people. The name of Jesus That's is right. higher and every she knee will know. bow she and every know. tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. And so we lift up the name of Jesus Christ and we say your That's kingdom right. come, oh Lord, That's your right. governance, right. your rule come in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in our cities, in our states and provinces, in America, in Canada, in Ukraine and Russia, the surrounding nations, Belarus and Poland and Romania, Moldova, uh, Lord, even Transnistria, that little piece of land there between Moldova and Ukraine. Father, move by your spirit in that region right now, we pray. And Father, we thank you that you have and you continue to answer prayer as we intercede on behalf of your church in Ukraine and in the nations of the world. And Lord God, we lift up your church in Cuba. We lift up your church in Nepal, in India, in China. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray yes, that your Jesus. church yes. be on fire in this hour, that your church would be the shining light in the midst of lockdowns, in the midst yeah. of uh, uh, darkness, that the light of the gospel would yeah. shine through your church, through those who are in these places, in Jesus' name, yes, in Jesus. Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen and amen. 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 Well, we need to uh, uh, close here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Tony and Marge. Amen. The last 30 seconds uh, each, uh, uh, Marge, then Tony, and Nina, and myself. <laughs> Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. It's it's a joy to be with you, Walter and Nina, today and share uh, the blessings of God in our lives and how he wants to bless you. And so remember, God is on the throne. And and as Catherine Kuhlman used to say, if God is on the throne, everything will come out all right. Well, we know that. We know the final chapter. So we know everything will come out all right. God bless you, everyone. God bless you. And uh, as we all usually close our programs, and by the way, thank you again, Walter and Nina, having us as guests on your program. But as we say on ours, uh, remember, Tony and Marge, Abram love you, but God loves you more. <laughs> well, praise Amen. God. I just want to say what well, we always say as we close this program, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God bless all of you. Keep trusting him. And I say, Amen. Amen. Amen.